Hello guys and welcome back to Let's Play Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, I am Rabbit Luigi and in the last episode we started the Anjuin Cafe side quest, which is the biggest, the most amazing side quest in Majora's Mask and in Zelda history in my opinion, which, you know, is quite important about my video, whatever, but um, yes, in this episode we're going to try and complete it, we're going to keep going with it, and we're going to start by going back over here, because in the last episode basically Andrew and Cafe, they've been separated, Cafe's a little kid because he was uh, cursed by Skull Kid, for more information, go watch the other episode basically, but going back in here, you are not Cafe, you're the guy from the Curiosity Shop I think, huh, you're the green hat kid? Uh, yeah, well, I've got, like, a bunny hood, but yeah. I got a message from Cafe. Um, what is it? Now, Cafe, I've known him since he was a real- uh, since he was real li real little. He's pretty little at the moment. But when he showed up looking all young in that little brat body, I didn't know what I was seeing. I don't know why he's now got a sunny American accent. All I took w was one glance at that Keaton mask he was carrying for me to realize that I was looking at my, at my old friend. I gave them- I gave him that mask a long time ago, when he was just a little cafe. When he was just a little- just- okay, whatever. Didn't know he kept it that well for so long. He's a nice guy. I'm not sure why, but I want to give this to you. So he gives us the Pikachu mask, the Keaton mask. This is Cafe's mask of memories. Accepting this keepsake doesn't mean- doesn't make much sense to you. Uh, but you should take it anyway. We, indeed, we, we are a hoarder of masks. We, we want to be the happy mask salesman Mark II. Now, Cafe, he says he wants to take this, he says he wants you to take this to his mother. We get the express mail to mama. Express mail to mama. This is priority mail, so hurry up and deliver it. Gotta do that. Gotta get on with it. Customer came to my shop last night. I know I was there. Now, Cafe sees him, and Cafe's color just changes, and he goes running after the guy. The guy's a regular, a greedy thief named Sakon, you know, it's getting, it's starting to get together. I think he's from a can of village. Uh, you listen to his memories. This was added to your notebook. You were asked to deliver priority mail. This was added to your notebook as well. So, Cafe was uh, eavesdropping. Oh, just watching from the little hole in the back of his little room back there, which overlooks the curiosity shop. He saw the scene where Sakon comes in with uh, the bomb bag, as did we. He noticed that this is the same description as the guy who stole his mask, and he followed him. And where exactly did he follow him? Well, to a can of canyon, of course, which is where we saw him like running around here, usually in like the first couple of days. This is where Sakon lives. This is where Sakon, you know, drops his anchor. That, all those expressions, which mean the exact same thing. Now it's interesting. Uh, we saw him sell the bomb bag, or you know, not really. He basically gave it away in the end. If you stop him on the first night from stealing the old lady, you can't do any more of this side quest. This is a boulder, you can see it's a boulder. Hello, this is Sakon's hideout, protected by impenetrable security, by which you mean a giant boulder, uh, which is like, I don't know, it's like a door, so we can't really blow that up. But if we go over here, uh, we find Cafe. Hey man, how you doing? I found him, Green Hat Boy. <laughs> I have a name, you know. He's using this, he's using this place as his safe house for, for keeping his stolen goods. Apparently, his name is Sakon, yes, that's been explained a couple of times. He came to the shop last night and I followed him. Uh, his storage for the things he's stolen is on the other side of this rock door. Only Sakon can open it. The only way in is for Sakon to arrive. I'll wait. I've made a promise to Andrew. He will show up. So it's all its all come down to if and when Sakon shows up and mm, gives us access to this thing over here. So guess what we have to wait for. And it is just worth pointing out in between all of this going on, we are now at the night of the final day. So... Things are getting a little bit, you know, tense, because things, things are moving on pretty quickly, but you can see, just off in the distance, Happy Man is running this way, kind of slowly, but he's running this way. We have a stone mask on, which means he can't see us, just having it on as a precaution, just so I don't have to do this again, because it's a long side quest. I do actually have to do this again, which I will do off screen, for a very kind of stupid reason, but we'll get into that as we get nearer and nearer the time where I would need to do it again. Whatever, doesn't matter. So, he's, he's getting closer. What's he gonna do? What's he, is it like a sort of a clap? Do you clap? Do you click your fingers? How does he open it? He just does. It just opens. It's like pressure plates, pressure pads or something on the floor, which react to him walking in midair, walking on the spot or running on the spot or something. I don't know. Like a treadmill. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. If it opened by him running, 
And like a treadmill, a powder treadmill, that'd be cool. But whatever, that's not important. We're going inside, we're going inside Sakon's hideout, looking for his wedding mask. Welcome to Sakon's hideout. It's like a strange dungeon place or something, I don't know, it's got dungeon doors, which lock with bars after, that's scary. Ah, what have we found? We found the mask! Look, there's a mask there. It's the sun's mask. It's the sun, yeah, okay, yeah, don't worry, I was gonna make a joke, it's not a good joke. Oh, but he's stepped on a switch. You idiot, Cafe, you had one job. One job wasn't touch nothing. But break the glass. Now I've done it, you have. Oh dear. And now, oh, you're screwed, you're screwed now. Absolutely. Step on that switch. Uh, yeah. What, are you telling us what to do? Oh, get, get on with it, get on with it, don't even question. It's some set where the door stays op on open only while the switch is pressed. It's kind of a, a two-way, two-way clever puzzle thing. And what this does is it allows us to play as Cafe. What is going on in this game? That's awesome. There should be some device in this room that also opens the mask. O opens the door. I can't talk today. Oh, the, oh, the mask. The mask is standing still because the cutscene's standing still. But going further down the line, there's a little chute. There's a little trap door. That's where it's going. He's trying to pull it out of our reach and make his escape. We've got to hurry. Indeed we do. We've got to do some puzzling. This is like one of the only times in any Zelda game, and I think definitely the first time in a Zelda game, where you play as someone other than Link. That's no good. This isn't a Switch. Go check that room. There should be some sort of mechanism. Please, there's no time. I know. Let me go and don't talk to me. And let's just get on with it. I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> That's harsh, but is there a choice? Should we help him? We should help him. Not moving ahead in the face of danger when you know it's for the better is just like tail. That's it. Let's go. Oh dear, you, didn't, you had to think twice about that. You serious? What kind of what kind of spiritual fairy guidance are you? I don't know, but it's going to it's drafting to cafe now. Pressing the orange switches will slow it down briefly. Pressing the red ones will speed it up briefly. So we want to be going for the orange switches almost all the time. I can do this because I have awesome swords and it doesn't really matter. This is quite an easy puzzle, but if you don't know what you're doing, this can be rather nerve-wracking. Now, if you remember this correctly, you've got to be a little bit scary with this. You've got to press this, which slows it down. Then you've got to hold it on the quicken up switch, and then you've got to push it down here. Easy, easy block puzzle, but very, very frantic if you, again, don't know what you're doing. Ah, it's a Wolfos! Get out of here, Wolfos! I have awesome sword, yes! Feel the wrath of my awesome sword! Also, I've got to get this out of the way, because that's in the way. Also, it's actually all, always on the red switch, which is a little bit frantic and scary. If you're low on time, I don't know. You could move it out of the way if you had to, but that is the puzzle. Open and done. Apparently, the cutscene fast forward did to a point where I was a little bit closer, but I got the sun's mask back, as in Cafe did, not me. <clears throat> I'm very happy for him. You helped Cafe! Can I have, like, a, a, a cafe coffee something? There's still time. I must get back to town. He says still time. We, like, went in there at, like, 7 p.m., 8 p.m. on the final day. Well, time apparently moves much faster in Sakon's hideout. Because if we come out of here right now, when he's done leaving the area, taking his time, game taking his time, you'll actually see, eventually, hello, He's off screen! We'd actually see it's for final six hours all of a sudden. I mean, how did that happen? How the hell did that happen? It's midnight on the final day. Just, just like that, okay? It's a little bit weird, but what we have to do now, there are two things we can do. Uh, one, which, one which is optional, one which is completely part of the side quest. The first thing, the slightly more optional one, which I don't really think is actually part, it's part of the side quest, but it's got two different routes you can go down, which is why I need to do this twice. I'm going to go down the route which is best for me at this stage in time, which incidentally is up here. Now, Postman has been quite frequent, quite a common character, a frequent supporting character in this side quest, but he's got one final thing he needs to do. He's over here, hunched down. Oh, I want to flee, but, but it's not written on the schedule. To, to me, the delivery schedule, it's the highest priority. It is indeed. That is a man who really, really cares for his job. Probably uh, sort of psychotically so, which I think is a bit of a problem. Though this is priority mail seal. This is the highest of priorities. I shall deliver it. We have given him something to live for by delivering mail. He's one of those people. He's a, he's a pure and utter job's worth. Which I admire occasionally, it's a little bit weird, but he's got to get changed, can't see that. And the postman is back! 
underway. He is doing his work. Gotta admire that. Uh, we could follow him, but I'd actually rather meet him where he's got to go deliver the mail, okay? And here he goes. He's very quick today. Mainly because, I, I don't know. Is this just something where, because he's got one more letter to deliver or something, he... Do we just write it on his schedule, saying, you can leave now, you can flee the town and see how far you can get in four and a half hours? I'm not sure. Not sure. It's a bit confusing. But uh, we're just going to wait. Going to wait for him. Going to wait and see what's going on. Eventually he'll come out, hopefully, before the moon crashes. Should point out, while we're here, that's a pretty big moon. That's pretty scary. That's uh, a little bit disheartening, maybe is the right word, that uh, we're about to die. Postman, you think you could hurry up a little so we don't die? I'm a little bit scared. A little bit scared of death right now, but um, apparently the postman was as well. I don't, or maybe he wasn't. Maybe that's part of the schedule that he's not. There he is. Now he wasn't scared of death. He was just scared of not meeting his schedule. Hello, can I talk to you? I want to talk about uh, something. Something. Uh, let's talk about the moon. Such a pretty moon to tonight. Whatever. Hello. Hello, Mr. Postman. I have decided to flee. It is an order from the postmaster. I am now free. I can set my own schedule. I don't need this anymore. So here, I'll let you have it. We get the postman's hat. We are the postman now. This dignified hat allows you to check the mail you see to put it on. It might just suit you. This is a very niche mask, which is quite difficult to get because you've got to go all, through, all the way through this to get it. You saved a troubled public servant. This was added to your notebook. Indeed it was. And he skips away. What a nice man. By the way, because we haven't actually talked to the guard yet, he won't even let us out. He won't let us out. Because, uh, I don't know. You, you, you're failing to notice this. You're failing to... Really? Okay. But time is short. Time is going to run out eventually. So we might as well go up here. This is Andrew's room. We're allowed in here. And briefly before we get into emotional stuff, let's open the chest and get a hundred rupees, because, you know, there's nothing which sort of makes life a little bit less stressful than a lot of money. But hello, Andrew, how, how, how are you holding up? I've decided to wait for him. I've made my promise. I'm fine with this. I believe in him. Indeed she does. Very powerful relationship she's got, and she's got the wedding dress with the moon mask. You see what this is, or the moon's mask, which uh, we'll get into later, but that's the other half of the ceremonial masks. She's got the moon's mask, and uh, Cafe has now got the Sun's Mask, and all we can do now is wait for him, really. And I think this is quite... This is one of the best moments of this side quest, because everything else, or quite a lot of this side quest, rather, involves a lot of waiting around, but that's because the events happen at specific times, whether it's like 1pm or something on a specific day, you got to wait for the postman to arrive, or something like that. This is a different sort of waiting, because this is waiting with the threat of impending death. I don't know why I looked up, but the threat of impending death happening pretty damn soon in about two hours, which isn't that long in actual time. So we're waiting for Cafe, and he's going to show up eventually, isn't he? You'd hope you would. But uh, it's still a little bit unsettling that you're just sort of sitting around hoping and praying like she is right now. This is where it sort of becomes quite an empathetic thing. You'll feel the same kind of, I, I don't want this to be in, in vain. I don't want to have to do this again by Cafe not showing up. So, I don't know. It's a very interesting double use of a, of a mechanic and a, a feeling towards a mechanic. And it's kind of clever. Might be why I like this side quest so much that it all comes together in the end. Lots of flashing lights and Cafe's here. Cafe is in the building. I don't know how I teleported over there, but let's just go with it. I... I have met you before. What a familiar scent. Long, long ago, yes. We were still young. We made a promise, didn't we? The masks of the sun and the moon. We were to exchange them on, on, the, on the day of the Carnival of Time. And you. I'm sorry I was late. Welcome home. And they embrace. It's a little bit weird that she's having to kneel down, but... All power to them. All power to them. I'm not going to rain on that parade. <laughs> They're lovers, but they look just like a mother and child. It's a strange, strange circumstance we got here. Let us exchange the promised masks. And they put them together. And we get the ultimate reward for this whole side quest. The penultimate mask in the game. 
pretty much. We've exchanged our oaths and have become a couple. You are our witnesses. Please accept this mask. We're including the fairy as well, I just realised that. But we get a bit of a weird mask. You got the couple's mask. It's filled with their love. It's kind of nice. Please take refuge. We are fine here. We shall greet the morning together. The two gave you a happy mask. Happy mask. Don't use the words happy and mask next to each other. It's, it's, it's scary. It's scary to me. But they are now going to stay there. Please take refuge. We are fine here. We should greet the morning together. Indeed, they're going to stay there until the moon crashes in. They are happy. They are content. They have no fear going into the new day. So that's kind of grim. They're not going to. They're not going to flee. They're not going to go anywhere more with that. But this has been Rabbit Luigi. This has been Let's Play Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. In the next episode, we're going to put some of our, our newfound masks and look how many we've got now. I always like the couple's mask because it honestly looks a little bit like a mummified face. Probably more so than the Gibdo mask. But we're going to put some of our new masks into action, get some heart pieces from them, and also find out what happens when you take a different route in the Anjou and Cafe quest. Because there is another reward we can get from playing around with that priority mail, basically. Uh, the time is getting tight. The moon's getting pretty damn close. I'm going to see you next time, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.